Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode from the Dev Marketer channel. This is the series on how to build a blog with Laravel. We start from absolute beginner, work our way up to a pretty intermediate level blogging application, all right? So we've worked on tons of stuff up to this point. We just finished, finished the tags crud, and I promised that we would then start our commenting system, but I was reminded this morning that I promised another um, item before we finished the series, and that was a working contact form. I thought I would go ahead and slip it in now, just to kind of break up the crud, the crud stuff, since we just did a crud, uh, we did that with tags, now we're gonna do it again with comments. I thought, hey, it'd be kind of cool to do a contact form. So let's go ahead, we're gonna create a working contact form, we're gonna explore the mail method, uh, the mail class that came with Laravel, and um, see how it works and go ahead and send an email. All right, so the mail class of Laravel is built off of um, the PHP library called Swift Mailer, okay? Very, very popular library, very, very um, powerful library as well. Um, let's us do lots of different things. And so that's what this is built off of, and Swift Mailer comes installed with Laravel when you run a new Laravel application. Um, it, you know, it just pre-installs this Swift Mailer. And then the Mailer is a class that Laravel has that's built on top of the Swift Mailer library. All right, so it allows us to do some pretty advanced stuff. Working with emails in Laravel is actually really simple. We can actually create views for our emails using, you know, blade views. And um, we can do inline um, attachments. We can do, it makes everything just so easy to actually, um, takes all the headache away from mail. All right, so before we get started on this tutorial, what I need you guys to do is um, we're actually going to need to work on the uh, the config file so that we can actually send mail. Now, if you remember this, it's going to be basically the same thing as in the previous video we did about mail when we were working with authentication and we set up the password resets. Um, it were basically the exact same thing here. We're going to focus on sending mail via the SMTP protocol. And that's going to be the way we do it in this series. Now, as you start working with all sorts of email providers, you're going to find that there's two ways to send email. There's the SMTP protocol and there's the API. Um, you know, all these services have their own API. So if you're building a, um, you know, a production level app, you've got hundreds of thousands of users every day sending emails, you might, you probably want to look into sending via the API. That's going to be the more um, reliable way to send it and um, stuff like that. It also gives you access to new features that certain transactional email providers have. And so um, you're probably gonna wanna look into the API. Laravel supports a lot of those APIs out of the box. However, because this is just a contact form and because this is the basic tutorial on Laravel, we're just gonna focus on SMTP, but we will be hitting up how to use send me email via the API in our next series, which is building an e-commerce website with Laravel. That's gonna go into advanced and intermediate Laravel techniques, and um, we're gonna go over the API in that series, okay? Now, for now, remember using the SMTP. You need to go to whoever you're going to be running your email through, get your SMTP credentials, and I'll show you where to install them. Now, in production, you're gonna to wanna to install them under config and mail.php. From here, you'll obviously, since we're sending as SMTP, we just keep the driver as SMTP. And then you're gonna to wanna to change your host URL, your port, um, probably your, your default email address, and then you're gonna to wanna to change the username and the password, all right? Now, because we're sending from local and from um, from local test uh, development, we actually have a, a .env file here, and you can see it's set to local, and we have different credentials that overwrite that config file, okay? If you put something in this .env file, it will override the um, config file. So this allows us to have an environment file where we can say, while we're in local, go ahead and run SMTP, we're gonna be using mailtrap.io, which we talk about in the other video, so if you wanna go look at that, you can do that. Um, and then we've got all the ports and username and password set up. Now, um, let me double check this because I think I, I reset my username and password, so these probably aren't updated. So I'm gonna head on over to mailtrap.io. Um, you guys can see this here, and I'm gonna log in. 
That's weird. Did I? Lo I might have logged in with my G GitHub account. Oh, here it is. Okay, perfect. So I've got my demo inbox, and um, it looks like let's see my username. It actually might be the same. Oh, it's the same. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna be keeping this. Um, I got my username. It tells you up here your username and your password, and then your port, which is we're gonna be using 25. So this is the SMTP credentials. Now you can get you can put your Gmail ones in. I talked about that in the other video. If you want to go watch that, um, if you use any transactional email service like Amazon SES, Mandrel, um, Mail Mailjet, SendGrid, any of those. They all have SMTP credentials just like this where they'll just list them and you just need to focus on the host, the port, the username and the password and just make sure it matches in here and then you'll be set up to send email. All right. Okay. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and actually start working on the contact form so we can um, send email via the contact form. All right. So go ahead and close your .env file. Make sure it's all set up correctly. Um, and again, I'll be using MailTrap and the way MailTrap works for those of you guys that didn't watch the previous video, MailTrap is like a, it's for development. It doesn't actually send emails out. It allows us to send any email address, but then it catches every single email and brings it in on the browser. And so I'm going to be able to like over here, you can see I have an inbox on the browser and I can view the emails that get sent right from inside the browser. It catches all of them. So it's for development. It, when I move this to production, I wouldn't use MailTrap because MailTrap can't send email out to the world. You need another serve provider like Amazon SES or you could use Gmail or you could do any, any other of these other services like SendGrid or something like that. Okay, That's what you would use in production. But this is just for development and testing. All right, that's out of the way. Let's go ahead and actually build the application. I have so much build up that I got to get set up, but anyway, we have to do it. I don't know how to get around it. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and make sure we have our routes set up. We're going to need a route that basically allows us to go to the contact form, and then we're going to need a route that allows us to send the contact form. So we need two routes here, and if we go to app, HTTP, and routes, we can take a look at our routes. Now you can see here we actually already have a route for contact because we already created a contact form a while ago. But we don't have a route to actually submit the contact form and send the email. So let's go ahead and take this exact same route like we have right here, which is just our URL slash contact. And we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to make it a post request. Okay, this is the get request. And this get request is going to display our form to the user with a submit button. So they're going to fill out the form, they're going to hit submit. And that's going to then send it to a post request, which we will then process the email and send out the email. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to create one right underneath it called route post. This creates the post request. And then we're going to do contact. And we're going to send it to pages controller just like we did here. And we're going to do post contact instead of get contact. Okay, so now we should go into our pages controller and make sure we have this function ready and available. So I'm going to save our routes file. We can go ahead and close it and let's head on to into our controllers and our pages controller. Okay, now in our pages controller down here at the bottom, we have our get contact form. So that's all set up. Um, we just need to now set up our post contact form. So we do public function post contact. It is case sensitive, so make sure you get that right. All right, just like that. And this is going to set up our post contact. All right. So next thing first is we need to look at getting the form set up. So if we come back over to get contact, is there anything else we need to get this contact form working? Nothing. We don't need to call the database. We don't need to do anything else. We're basically just displaying this view called pages.contact. Okay. So we're good there. Let's go ahead and now look at the view and just change anything that we need to change in order to get this form in the way that we want it. So let's head over to pages contact. So this is a view. So you guys know where those are down here under resources and views and then pages and then contact. And here's our contact form right here. So we already have this set up from the previous tutorials. We set up a, a quick and dirty contact form, but we never got it working. So let's go ahead and get it working. Okay, so you can see here we've got our form right in this area. We've got a field for the email, a field for the subject, a field for the message, 
and then a submit button. So it's pretty basic. All right, so the form is ready to go. Now, if you did want to add some other fields, you could do that here. And then you would just collect that data and you could put that into the email. So if you wanted to ask people like um, what kind of services they were interested in, you could create a select field down here and you know list your different services and they could choose one. You could get their first name or their last name or their full name, whatever. You could get their birth date. You can get whatever you want here. You could. I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. And what you're gonna do is that'll just come in on the request when they submit the form. You'll just grab that from the request and you can put that into the email. Um, so I'll leave that as homework to you guys if you wanna do it. But I'm gonna keep it simple for our tutorial. All right, now the one thing we're missing on this form is we haven't told the form where to go. So we're gonna come up here to the form and we're gonna set it equal. Um, we're gonna do action and the action just tells it where to submit the form to. So we're gonna submit it to, we're gonna use blade here. I don't know why my blade helpers aren't working. It seems funny. I might have to uninstall this plugin and reinstall it. Um, and we're going to use the URL helper and we're gonna send contact. So this will go to our URL slash contact is basically what it does. Now, why am I not using route? Because you see a lot of times I'll use this route. Well, that's because I didn't set up named routes. Um, if you go over to our terminal real quick, we run PHP artisan um, uh, route list. And you come over to our contact here. You can see that we have our, our post contact. We got our get contact. But you can see that we don't have named routes. So these are the named routes. And we don't have named routes set up. We could set it up. Just go into your routes file and add a named route. It's not very difficult. But I don't have it set up. And so that's why we're going to use the URL instead of the route. If we use route, we have to have named routes, which you don't have. So this would return an error. Okay, so we'll just use URL. It's not a big deal. And then for the second parameter of this form, we need to set the method. The method is going to be post, okay? And you guys know this because um, it says right here, we're... This is the get request where they view the form, but then when they submit the form, it gets submitted to the post version of this of this URL, okay? So we're gonna go to the contact, and then the, po the method is post, okay? Everything else is here, so we are good. Uh, make sure these match up, so the name, or sorry, email, subject, and message. This is how we're gonna pull it out of the request, okay? They're gonna submit this form, and it's gonna go now to that um, URL. So let's head back over to our pages controller. Real quick, let's save this. You can see it's not saved. Let's save that and head over to the pages controller. So this is all done here. Now we just need to set up our post contact. So in order to do this, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna validate all the information coming in, make sure the email address is actually an email address. And um, that's really the main concern, I guess. Before we actually send an email, we wanna make sure we have an actual email address, okay? They didn't just put gibberish in there. So we're going to wanna do this validate and then we do request, but you might know that request isn't going to work because we actually haven't brought in the request um, here inside of the function. So what we need to do, as you've seen before, is we need to mark this request, it's actually with a capital though, request, and then we set a variable for it, which is usually just request, so that we can actually access this variable which contains all the request data um, inside of here. However, we can't just do this. We actually need to make sure that we're set up for it. We don't have it namespaced in. So what I like to do is I'm just gonna go over to a controller that was generated by Laravel. Um, let's find another controller here, like the category controller. And you can see that we need both of these at the top here in order to access the requests. Okay, so I just gotta copy it from this one and then paste it up here. Okay, remember post is just so we can access our post model. Um, Okay, now we should have access to request. You can just verify this. You come down here, make sure it's set up the same as this, and then you can see that we've got, this is how we're validating basically. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna save in here, and let's finish our validation. So if all we're gonna validate is the email, and that's all I'm gonna do for right now is the email. If I were doing this for production, I would probably validate everything, but I'm just gonna focus on the email. That's the main concern. Okay, so we're gonna focus on email and we're gonna make sure that email is required, first of all. And then we're gonna also make sure it's an email. Now, if you come over and you can grab these validation rules real quick from Laravel, laravel.com, documentation, and um, validation.
Okay, so you come down here to available validation rules and you can see that we obviously are using required, but then we're also gonna be using email. And yeah, you just use the email and just make sure that it's an email. So that's how you know that we're using um, the right thing. So let's head back over to here and we've just verifying that the email from the request is both required and it's an email and, um, and that's it. In fact, actually what we may wanna do is let's go ahead here And let's just validate the other ones. There's really no point in not validating them. So we'll make sure there's a message. We'll just say it's a minimum of um, 10 characters. And then we're also gonna validate the, um, let's also go ahead and validate the subject. So we'll just say subject. Once again, let's just make sure it's a couple characters just so it's there. Um, we'll do three characters. All right, so we just set up a little array with everything validated. That's just good practice. I probably should have just done that from the beginning. And then um, we're all set. Let's just make sure we got our semicolon there. Okay, so now we've validated all the information. Now it's time that we can actually basically put it into an email. So now let's go ahead and look at the mail function. And I'll just pull open the documents real quick to show you guys that. So if you come over to the documents on Laravel, and I'll link these in the description, you can just come down to mail, and it talks about sending mail. Now I've covered a lot of this information already, but if you go down to the sending mail um, section, you can see that we actually can use a method called the, with the mail uh, facade. And this is basically what we do, is we do this mail send, all right? We set up the first parameter, which is going to be our view that we wanna send the email from, or the, view, the, the email, yep. And then if we're passing in any information into the view, we'll put that here. And then we have a closure right here that says, um, that allows us to set various from, to, reply to, and all the, basically the header information for the email. Okay, so now back in our application, we can go ahead and get this mail method set up. So what we've, we've already validated all our information here. So now what we can do on the next line is we're gonna wanna do mail send, all right? And then this will allow us to send our application right away. Now there is another way you can send a message and that's through queue, which will actually queue the message to be sent in the background at as soon as it can, basically at a later time. Now this is good if you're sending lots of emails, but if you're just sending one email, you can just use the mail send method. Um, but if you are sending lots of, of emails, um, for example, in our e-commerce application, we might we're, we will be queuing applications when we send out like receipts and stuff like that because you might have tons of receipts coming in, so we need to queue them to be sent um, so instead of waiting for the because otherwise they're going to be waiting for the request to uh, redirect and stuff like that and waiting for the whole mail to be sent. And if there's a backup of mail that hasn't been sent yet, then it could take a while that it's just sitting there you know, waiting for them to load. So, but we're gonna do mail send for now. I just wanted to let you know that it exists. That's part of the queuing mechanism inside of Laravel. Okay, so with the way mail send works, I'll just go ahead and just review it real quick. We basically need to tell it the view that we wanna send it to. Then we also wanna pass in um, any of the data that we wanna pass into the view is get sent is the second parameter. And then the third parameter is just gonna be the function it's like a, what we call a closure. So basically this is the function that contains all the header information for the email. The to, the, to, the from, the BCC, the CC, all that stuff that is um, in the header of the email. So basically the to address, the from address, and stuff like that. All that will be sent inside of here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just get this kind of um, set up and we'll talk about each of these things individually. We'll just start here at the beginning and then move our way down. Okay, so first things first, we need a view to send this from. So we can send, by default, we, it'll actually send HTML email, which, which is what you wanna do now that it's 20, 2016, you wanna be sending uh, HTML emails as default. Okay, so um, you can actually just use the blade view to access um, or to send the email, to design the email up. So what we're gonna do here is we'll create a folder called emails and we'll call it emails.contact, all right? Let's go ahead and do that in our views folder. So we go into resources, views. Inside of this folder here, we're gonna make another folder called emails. And this is where we'll store all the emails in our application. Right now we just have one email, but in a bigger application, you would have lots of emails. Uh, for example, in our e-commerce application, we'll have um, receipts, we'll have tracking information, we'll have um, 
I don't know, promotionals, maybe an abandoned cart email. There all sorts of emails that we'll have set up and designed inside of this email folder. And then we can access all the emails inside of this email folder. Kind of like how we have all these other folders represent controllers or uh, models. And then we've got everything related to those underneath. This is our emails. Okay, so now inside of our emails, let's create a new folder. We're gonna save this and we're gonna call it contact.blade.php. This is so we can do emails.contact. Head back over here. So now this is accurate. This will go to our email. And we'll go through and we're gonna fill the view in in a second, all right? So then the next item is basically the data we wanna pass in to the view. Now it doesn't need to be data, I just put that in, but we can pass any information that we want into the view. And we pass this in as an array. So this is kind of confusing. This is one of those gotchas that you need to know, but it gets passed in as an array. And let me explain. So let, first of all, let's come up real quick and let's fill, let's make an array. We'll just call it data for right now. So we'll call it data equals an array. All right, and we're gonna set this array. Let's just go ahead and close that off. And let's go ahead and just fill in this information here. Now the reason is because all this information, the email, the subject, the message, everything in the form is currently contained in the request. Well, the request is not going to be accessible to the view. So we need to manually pass in the information that we want to have in the request or that we want to have in the view. We need to manually um, basically compile it and pass it into the view. So what we'll do here is we'll create an array. We'll call it email. We will set email equal to um, the request email. Okay, we can access request here because we're still inside this function. But when we go into the view, we won't have access to it. Okay, so we're grabbing this email right here. So request or email equals request email. Oh, we don't need a, do we need a comma? Okay, um, subject. We'll set subject equal to request subject. Pretty fancy. And then the last one we have is our message. Now, um, you would think that this is what we would do. Message equals request message. But I did this on purpose because this is something where people get screwed up a lot. You'll get an error actually if you pass an array called message into your view. And the reason is because in HTML email in, or in emails in Laravel, there's actually a reserved variable when you send an email called message, okay? The message is basically if you were going to embed um, inline attachments and stuff like that, you would use this variable called message that Laravel automatically builds. And so there's always a variable called message in here. And um, so you can't have another variable called message. So we need to rename this to something else. So we're gonna call it body message, like that. And so it'll be called body message, but we'll set it equal to the request. All right, so now inside of our view, we'll use body message instead of message, okay? Because message is already used for something else. All right, so that's basically everything we need there. Let's go ahead and save that. So now we have this array called data and we're passing in the data, which will get passed into this view. All right, now what's kind of confusing about this though is that um, we're not going to access it in the view. We're not going to access it like this, like you might think. Okay, that's how you might think it is because that's technically what it is. It's a That's how you would access it inside of here. But what actually happens is Laravel will actually go through and take every key from the, um, the from this array and create a variable with the name of that key and that variable will be set equal to whatever the value of that key is. Okay, so in this case, basically, we could just reference it with subject or body message um, or email, okay? So that's how we'll access it because every single key will become its own variable. This becomes its own variable, this becomes its own variable, and this becomes its own variable. And of course, you can embed these. So if you had something like, um, I don't know, let's say you had something called survey, you could set this equal to another array that says um, question one is equal to hello or whatever, question two is yes or whatever. Okay, let's say that, that you had that and you could have a whole bunch of stuff in this array. So then this item is equal to an array, which means that now what you can do is you would have access to, um, we, we, call it, we call it a survey, and now you would have access to Q1, okay? And then this would be equal now, inside of here, this would output 
um, whatever we put in here. It would output hello. Okay. All right. So anyway, just want to make sure that that makes sense to you guys. All right. So let's go ahead and just create our view real quick. We're going to keep it pretty simple. Um, let's just go ahead and create a header and we'll say you have a new contact via the contact form. And then we'll just put in, um, we'll do something like this. We'll just do Well, we don't need all this actually. Um, we're just going to do the body. So we can do body message. We just wrap this in blade. All right. And then down here we can just do a, let's just do a little paragraph and we'll just say sent via, and then we'll just do email. All right. Okay, so this is going to be a really basic email, but you could actually make this as fancy as you wanted. This is HTML, so you could do a full fancy HTML email. Just code, put the code in here, and then you can make it as nice and fancy as you want um, using HTML. All right, but we're going to use this basic one for now. Let's go ahead and save that. So we've got all that done. Um, next, we just have um, our mail send. So we've got, our, this is good. We passed in our data. We're good. Next, we just have this closure. So what we need to do in our closure is we need to create a variable. We'll call it message, or we can just call it, well, let's call it message. You can call it anything you want. And now what we do is down here, what we can, we just reference that variable. We call it message and um, we set the various information. So we can do from, we can do message to, you can do um, CC, you can do BCC, you can do all sorts of stuff like that. They have a reply to, um, is it this? I think it's this. You can do a reply to, um, all this stuff's in the documentation. I'll link it below, all the stuff you can do. This is also how you'll attach attachments. If you had them, you would attach them. So anyway, all that information's inside of here and that's what we're setting up as the headers for the email. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll have a from, we'll have a to, and then we'll have a um, subject. It doesn't matter what order you put these in. And we need semicolons for all these. And then let's go ahead and fill them in. Now, before we fill them in, we actually need to bring this information into this closure. And so we need to pass that information in manually. Now, we are basically just need access to the email address and the subject. So, and let's close this real quick. We don't need that. Um, we just need access to the email and the subject. So I'm gonna pass in this data form, uh, this data value into this right here. And so the way we do that is we do, inside of our function, we're gonna do use, and we'll just pass in data again. And now we'll have access to this data variable here. Okay, so now we can do data um, email. So it's coming from their email address. Then we'll, who is it going to? Well, let's just, we can hard code this. So this is gonna be my email address. So we'll do um, hello at devmarketer.io. So this will be my email address because they're all getting sent to me. And then the subject will be equal to this right here, whatever they put in as the subject. So we'll just put in data subject like that. Okay. So that's basically it. That's all that we need here. And um, we should be able to send our email now. So let's go ahead and test it out. And um, we'll come over here to our application. Oh, we got a parse error. We got to go make sure we get these errors. So pages controller line 40. We, we forgot. We somehow just forgot the hash rockets. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. So these are all hash rockets. All of you guys should have probably noticed that. Good on you. All right, so let's uh, move on. So we got email, subject, body message. We're all good there. Save that. Let's refresh now. We shouldn't get any errors. Let's contact form. And here we'll put in our email address. So we'll call it testing at dev marketer, or I'll just do jcurtis.com. Okay, subject is live from the screencast. And then here we'll put in our message. You are live on YouTube. How exciting. All right, now we can send our message. Okay, we got another error. We got, this is CSRF protection. I forgot to put in the tokens. I'm not used to this because I usually use the form helpers and I don't have to do this. But since we did a manual form, um, we need to go back over to our form, which is in our views. And it's gonna be inside of pages and contact. Okay, so now inside of this form, we need to have CSRF tokens. 
And when we use our form helpers, which is how we've always done it in the past, we didn't need this, but we need it here. Okay, so CSRF token like this will create CSRF tokens and save it. Let's go back here and I'll show you real quick what it looks like if you inspect this. You can see that here's our form right here. You can see that the form opens up and then it goes straight into this first field. We would expect there to be a hidden field here called CSRF. So let's refresh. And it's actually outputting the CSRF token. Oh, I actually put CSRF token. It's not CSRF token. That's our actual token. We want CSRF field. And that's our that's the hidden field that has the CSRF token. Okay, so let's save that. My bad. Um, let's refresh that. Okay, now if we come into here, now you can see the form opens up. Now there's a hidden field that says has the, the form token in there. So now it'll match it up and we'll have CSRF protection, okay? Sorry about that, guys. That was a real, that was stupid on my part. Let's do this again. Okay, so email is testing at devmarketer.io where send, subject is um, live from the screencast. And then the message we're saying is you are live on YouTube. How exciting. All right, so now we're good there. Let's go ahead and send the message. Shit, I forgot one last thing. I, it's always embarrassing when you get a lot of these errors. So I forgot to namespace in up here. So we called this mail method, but we didn't namespace it in. Just like everything else, we have to remember to do that. I'm guilty of forgetting this stuff all the fucking time, okay? So use mail is all we need in order to namespace that. So let's go ahead and save it. And the reason we can do use mail and not like app slash mail or something is because mail is a facade. Okay, let's try this again. Let's refresh. And I think this time it actually worked. Okay, now we don't have a redirect set up, so we're going to want to look into that. But it looks like it worked. I didn't get any errors, which is great. If I come over to mail trap, you can see I now have another email that came in a few seconds ago. If I click it, you can say it says you have a new contact via the contact form. It has the message that we wanted. And then it says sent V and then we put our email. So everything seemed to work. We're actually sending email. We're good to go. Okay, you can see here the from email is our testing. The to is our hello. And we know that because when we come over here to our pages controller, we set the from to be whatever they put into the form, the sub into the um, form. And then we have th this hard coded. So it always comes to hello at devmarketer.com, which is my email address. Because every time they submit a form, it's always going to come to me. So I just hard coded the um, the to email, so it always comes to me. Um, but then the from email goes is whatever they put into the form. Okay, so let's do it one more time. But this time, let's actually add in a request. So we can do um, let's do session flash success. This will add a success message, and um, your e email was sent like that. And then we can actually redirect. So we'll return redirect to our route and we'll just send it to um, our index, which is just, so we'll just do URL. Send it to the URL, there we go. Um, okay, that's everything. So now let's try it one more time. Let's come back over here. Let's go to our contact form. This time I'll put it in a different email just to show you that it works. We're gonna send it from um, jacurtis.com and we'll say, this is the second email. All right, and we're gonna send the message. Oh, did it again. We forgot to call in session. You'd think I'd learn my lesson, but I didn't. Okay, so use session. We forgot to namespace session in again, save. And the thing is, I think the mail sent because if you look at the, what happened is the error, it would have processed the email and then the error would have come right here. So I think it probably worked. Yeah, it did work. So we've got our second email. Um, you can see it's correct. It ha now has this email address. So it worked, it just didn't redirect us. So let's just do one more real quick. Um, I'll just change this real quick. Third email. Um, and we'll just say third time is the charm. Perfect. And now we're gonna send it Fingers crossed, it should work. Yeah, we got it. All right, sweet guys. So we got success, the email was sent, 
So now we got a little bit of a user interface there and um, we, and we're good. So if we come back over here, you can see we now have a third email, third time's the charm, everything's correct. Um, so we are good to go. All right, so from here guys, you guys should be able to send your own emails. You know all the basics it is to send an email. The thing to keep in mind, of course, is just make sure that you're, send, you're changing your SMTP set settings to an actual email address, not MailTrap. You can use MailTrap, but just know that it's only for testing purposes. Your, the emails will always come to this MailTrap.io account, and um, they're not actually gonna go out to the people that you think they're going to. They're always gonna get sent to you. Even if you put in someone else's email in here, um, if you put my email in here, it's always gonna go to your account, okay? It catches all the emails and brings it into the MailTrap account. A lot of people were confused about that when I did the, um, uh, the password resets. A lot of people thought MailTrap was actually sending emails out to people, but it's not. It only goes to the MailTrap account. It's just for testing. When you wanna send real emails out, you need to set the SMTP settings to be your SMTP settings, okay? So set it to a real, a real live account not mail trap. Okay. So with that guys, you guys are all set up. You're ready to send emails. Hopefully you learned a lot in this video. We went through a ton of information. We learned an entire facade, an entire class in one video. So it was jam packed. It got long. Sorry about that, but you got to learn what you got to learn. We got it. We had to do it this way. So um, anyway, I hope you guys had a good time. I'm going to see you guys in the next video where we do actually start comments and we're gonna have a commenting system on our blog, which will be a lot of fun to work on. And like I said, we're wrapping this on up, getting ready for another big project. So hope you're really looking excited. You're really excited for that. I sure am. Um, thanks for everything, guys. If you would love to shout out to me, you can reach me on Twitter at underscore J-A-C-U-R-T-I-S, J-A Curtis. Don't forget the underscore. You can always email me. I got the, I'm working on the website real quick for devmarketer.io. It should be up any time now. You can go ahead and check it out and see if it's there for those of you guys that are watching this after it's been live a little while. It'll probably be up. Um, and last thing is whether or not you are um, watching this live or not, I've got an email subscription that I would love for you guys to join if you're interested. We basically go over all sorts of stuff about Laravel and other programming and marketing type of things. We um, It's gonna be a once a week newsletter that kind of gives you an insider look into all the other stuff that I don't share on this channel. So if you wanna take, um, kind of subscribe to that, you can unsubscribe at any time. The link is in the description. Just go in, you put in your email address and you're good to go. Again, you can unsubscribe at any time. I'm not gonna spam you guys. I get enough spam as it is. I'm not giving that to you guys. But um, anyway, I'd love to have you guys on that list and um, join me for kind of that insider track of information. Okay, that's all I got for today's episode. I will see you guys in the next video.